Meet people. Shake their hand. I know this is the computer age. Everybody looking at their digital devices. That device is only going to go one way. When you get that two-way experience with a person, put that device down. Get with that person. Get this contact. You're going to see him. But believe me, we, we have struggles. Sometimes we have personal struggles. We'll be on the road. Somehow we'll be struggling. We argue with each other. Or something is going on. Somebody have a very bad attitude. It's life. We're human beings. How do you prepare yourself and uh, like get yourself known enough to be in a band like this or you know another big band? You got to be around the music. You know, in, in, in my tradition, like how did I get known to play with our Blakey? I got around him. You got to get around and let people hear you. This music, it has a social part, component to it. Get around it. It's not, uh, it's not organized like in, in, in a lot of the ways. We don't have like a, we don't have a, uh, a canon of stuff that's like, I knew when I was 15, basically what the trumpet audition for the Chicago Philharmonic is gonna be the next time there's an opening. There'll be some newer pieces, but the pieces that I learned when I was in high school Beethoven, Lenore, Overture, Stravinsky, Petrushka, Pines of Rome, it's basically the same now as it was then. The same 25 excerpts, maybe the five extra ones. And our music, you know, what are the 25 excerpts? So you got to get around the music. Yeah. Pearl and Riley was one of the founding members of the Jazz at Lincoln Center Orchestra. He has five kids and many grandkids now. So he had like a, a very uh, youthful type of spirit and, and knowledge. And one time he and I were discussing about, you know, the particulars about jazz. And he said, in order to be a jazz musician, you have to realize that when preparation meets opportunity, you have a possibility before you. So you have to be well prepared. So when that opportunity knocks, you can take advantage of it because it may not knock twice for you. Yeah, you got to really want to do it. Like my, my roommate told me, it was a guy named Akira Tana, played drums. I was 18. We used to sit up and look at Twilight Zone and Star Trek. Came on at 1 o'clock in the morning, sitting at this table looking at a little black and white TV. And he said, man, if you're going to learn how to play, you need to figure out how to get in R. Blakey's band. I said, I'm R. Blakey hired me, man. I'm too sad to play with him. He said, you need to go down there. They're playing at McKell's and stand around till they look at you. And he talked to somebody. I said, let this dude play. I played. I was just sad. They played Along Came Betty. It changed keys like every, this is in the 70s when we were just playing on sus cards. Man, I didn't know what he was playing. You know, I just blah, 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 blah. Blakey looked at me and was like, oh, Lord, have mercy. Sad. And then he said, we're going to be in Boston next weekend. I was in Boston, man. I wanted to learn how to play. He didn't say, come play with us. I, just we in Boston. Okay, I'm in Boston too, boss. Get around it.